And here with us today, we have uh, Eric Vanderwall. He is uh, joining us here inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Um, yesterday, we spoke with Jerry Jason, the flight director, uh, lead for the uh, launch of the automated transfer vehicle. And so Eric is actually here. He is with the European Space Agency as a program representative. Thank you, Eric, and welcome. Thank you. Um, so everything now remains on track for the uh, launch of the, the uh, on the Ariane 5 rocket, correct? That's correct. So we we're are on track and we're green for launch tomorrow night. Great. And uh, so first, let me just talk to you. We talked about operations, as I mentioned. We talked with Jerry Jason yesterday. And, and so now I would like to just talk a little about yourself. Tell me where you're from and how did you make your way to the European Space Agency? Well, I'm, uh, I'm French. Uh, my name is Eric uh, van der Waal. I joined uh, the European Space Agency in 1991, uh, worked in operation system development, and finally ended up after 20 years um, here in Houston as a uh, representative to the ISS program for ESA. Um, I've been doing this job now for 10 years. Um, I've been there from, uh, from the beginning of the developments of our Columbus laboratory and all the payloads we have launched ever since and uh, truly enjoyed it. Great. Um, so now let's just go ahead and talk, as the program representative, what is your role with the Automated Transfer Vehicle 3? The role uh, with the ATV is, is very similar to the, to the generic role I have, and that is uh, to provide uh, a liaison function in terms of program management for uh, all the interaction we have uh, uh, with the ISS program. Uh, with the ATV being an integral part of the ISS. Um, the, in the operations part, I provide assistance to the operations management functions we have in Europe um, uh, during uh, the flight and the preparation for the flight of ATV. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, tell me real quick, um, what is the significance of ATV-3, this particular vehicle as opposed to the others that have gone before? Well, this is this is the third vehicle in a, in a series of five vehicles which we're going to launch. Um, the importance of ATV uh, for us is to have an independent uh, access to the ISS, and this is this is something we achieve in combination with our launch of the Iron Five in Kourou. Um, that's politically and operationally very important to us to have that access, and then secondly, uh, we're using the ATV flights as uh, a payment in kind to offset our common system operation cost, which every partner shares on the ISS. And this, this flight will, uh, will be a contribution to that offset. Okay, and uh, so talk to me a little about the naming convention. It is Eduardo Amaldi. How did we get that name? We were trying to honor um, a scientist or visionaries in Europe, uh, which have contributed to um, the, the technical and scientific and cultural progress which Europe uh, is going through. And um, for the first ATV, we picked uh, the name Jules Verne, which is a French author and, uh, and visionary, which uh, I think everybody knows. The second ATV uh, was chosen to be called Johannes Kepler, a uh, German uh, astronomer and mathematician, which is very well known for his uh, laws of planetary motion. Now, the third ATV um, is an Italian, Eduardo Armaldi. He um, is from the 20th century, uh, passed away in 1989. He, um, he was not only a uh, nuclear physicist, he uh, excelled and pioneered uh, in the 1970s when he was uh, doing uh, research on uh, gravi gravitational waves. But what was very important is that, uh, similar to all the other ones, they have in some way contributed to the European space flight we know today. And Eduardo Amaldi, uh, in the 19, late 1950s, actually was one of the pioneers which came up with the idea that we needed to cooperate inside Europe and create a, a joint agency uh, for space flight, which eventually became the European Space Agency today. Wow. Fascinating. So um, tell me a little more about the history. You, you mentioned the naming naming conventions of the other two ATV vehicles, but can you um, explain to me some of the, you know, how, how the development came about and, and that sort of thing, just some history of ATV vehicles? Um, 
we started um, in, in, in with a project and conceptually uh, a very long time ago to think about ATVs and having having something to provide resupply to the ISS, not only to our uh, Columbus module and our payloads, but something which uh, the entire station could make use of. Uh, that's how the idea of the ATV was born. The ATV itself uh, is making use of, um, of hardware and concepts which we had developed for uh, MPLM and the Columbus module. So once the ATV was born, uh, we had to uh, find a way to uh, meet the resupply demands of mm -hmm. the space station and have a, a significant amount of ATVs enough so that we could offset our common system operation cost. That's how we ended up with, uh, with the number of ATVs we have today. Um, the first ATV flew in 2008, which, uh, which is about uh, four years ago. Mm -hmm. We regularly try to fly an ATV uh, once a year. There needs to be at least a year between two ATVs. Okay. Um, so, explain to me, you mentioned the Columbus module. Just explain to me a little about Europe's contributions to the International Space Station. Okay, so the ATV, in, in terms of ATV, um, the ATV um, can resupply the station. So we provide a service. Um, there's two parts to that. First, we can, uh, the ATV has, a, has the capability to launch up to 4,000 kilograms of propellant, and I'll come back to that. Uh, we can launch water, we can launch gases like nitrogen, oxygen, and we can launch dry cargo. Uh, a trade-off is made uh, between uh, all those elements to, uh, to make sure that we have uh, the right amount of propellant versus the right amount of dry cargo and that we're not exceeding our maximum loading. Eduardo Amaldi will carry um, um, more than six and a half tons of cargo. Um, the um, advantage we have with ATV mm -hmm. is that once we arrive on the station, we remain docked for six months. Being docked with six months uh, allows the crew to basically use what's in the ATV mm -hmm. uh, as needed. And at the same time, uh, get rid of some of the trash which exists in the ISS, which is one other thing that ATV will do is, is upon its departure, it will um, bring down or more than six tons of trash, and which will be then uh, destructed in, his, uh, in the re-entry of the ATV. Once we are attached, there's another service we provide to the station, and that's where all this propellant comes into play. We carry propellant, which we transfer directly to the Russian segment, mm -hmm. um, but we also have propellant, which we use for propulsive support of the ISS stack, um, which means we uh, will support reboost of the, the entire ISS stack. We will support debris avoidance maneuvers, and as needed, we can perform attitude control maneuvers of the station using ATV thrusters. Um, so th there is a kind of a large role the ATV has uh, in the ISS, and, and for us operationally and again politically, it's very important that we have this independent access and that there are different vehicles that the ISS can rely on. Sure, but so it, it not only is bringing up cargo, it also is going to add some space and, and also deliver trash back. That's, that's a very good point. Uh, once the ATV is attached to the mm -hmm. space station, it becomes an integral part of the ISS volume. Mm -hmm. uh, with the ATV, the, the pressurized compartment of the ATV adds about 50 cubic meters of volume to the ISS. Mm -hmm. and, and can you explain about what size is that? Just to, something that we can relate to here. Uh, how big? I, mean, I would say it's a... It's a well, something we can relate to. That's, that's a bit hard to say, but it's 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 a bit smaller than smaller than the Columbus module. But that's what okay. we're looking at. Okay, great. And uh, like a, the size of a, a double-decker bus, I think is what we've just heard. We have actually have a di diagram that's out right now. Um, so real quick, also we have a uh, a question for you that uh, came to us from Twitter, and we'll go ahead and ask that one for you now. This comes to us from Data Chick. We want to know what sort of items will ATV3 bring to the ISS? Okay, so I um, 
I don't have a detailed list of what we're bringing inside in terms of dry cargo. The dry cargo itself is consists of, uh, of uh, science resupply, mm -hmm. there is logistic and maintenance, there is resupply items for the crew, mm -hmm. um, there's a variety of uh, uh, dry, what we call dry cargo, which are items which are packed in bags and loaded in the ATV. The ATV has, has eight racks in which we can fill out all that, uh, that cargo. In addition to this cargo, um, we are bringing up uh, a uh, amount of propellant, which we will use for the, for the propulsive support. Um, there's more than two tons, uh, more than three tons, sorry. There's more than two tons of dry cargo. We will bring up some water, about 280 kilograms of water. Um, we will bring up propellant to refuel the Russian segment um, um, tanks. Uh, because I think it's all well known that the ATV docks to the uh, service module aft port mm -hmm. of the Russian segment. Uh, and there will be about 800, uh, almost 900 kilograms. And um, um, so, and then we uh, will bring up some gases, about 100 kilograms, uh, to resupply the station. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time here, and we really do appreciate all your work. And I guess you'll be around for the uh, for the launch of ATV3 as well following along I'll be here tomorrow absolutely night absolutely great thank, thank you thank you again. very much